Reg Mombasa and Peter O'Doherty have been dog trumpet now for over 30 years. That's longer than they were in Mental as Anything. 2020 brings in a whole new dog trumpet album, Great South Road, but COVID has stopped them from touring, but not performing. Pete and Reg are dog trumpet. In fact, you've been dog trumpet for a long time. I think longer than you've been Mental as Anything. Uh, Pete and Reg, welcome to Noise11.com. Good to have you here. Hello, how are you going? Hi, Paul. It's uh, a, a very interesting year for Dog Trumpet, isn't it? I would imagine that uh, the plans in January would have been pretty much locked out that this band would have been on the road for a lot of, uh, of this year with uh, the new album, uh, Great South Road, coming out. And yeah. then yeah, had a, had COVID a happened. That's right. You know, we, we, were, we, were, we were going to come down to Victoria and go down to, uh, to Canberra and the South Coast, plus, you know, play around Sydney and possibly other places, but no, that didn't quite happen. Oh, look, we're yeah, looking forward to the Dog Trumpet 2023 show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> along with every other Australian musician and just forget about the rest of the world. One of the great things that you have been doing during the uh, lockdown is uh, performing to the fans, uh, you know, very regular shows. And I guess that's given you a chance to perform a lot of these songs that hadn't been performed live up until now. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite fun, actually. I mean, we we, we played a lot of um, fairly obscure, you know, early mental songs that, that Pete and I had written that that, that our, our um, band didn't really know. And we, you know, we never got around to playing them playing them live. So it was it was quite good fun to, you know, play some songs that we probably hadn't played for close to 40 years and we had to relearn them and listen to the record again, which was funny. What were the ones that you went back to that, uh, you know, hadn't been played for that long? Oh, we played uh, Marianne, we played... Um... Went back to the first album, Get Wet with um, with the Mentors, we played Blacktown to Bondi. Blacktown to Bondi, mm. uh, Insect Liberation. Um... Uh, troop Movements in the Ukraine off the second album, es- Espresso Bongo, or Espresso Bongo, I should say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, we've just been dipping back into, you know, into... Songs that we probably really haven't hardly even played with the mental. You know, we might have played some of those songs, but um, <coughs> if we did, it's a long, long time ago. So it's good. it has been good fun to sort of just refresh our memories and look back on things. So we've still got a bit of terrain to, to cover there. There's lots of songs that we still haven't quite looked at yet. Plus, we did a few, you know, we do a few uh, obscure covers that we don't, that the band doesn't know that we don't play live as well. So that was good fun. Yeah, I mean, it's got a loose thing, and the two of us can can do that sort of stuff. We often sit here and play old folk songs, or you know, or an old blues song, or an old Hawaiian song that you know we may or may not attempt to do with dog trumpet. But the two of us can can um, you know we've got that sibling thing too, where we sort of know what to do more or less when we're we show each other songs, so it doesn't take too much effort to, or rehearsal to, to do it. We, we've always been a bit anti-rehearsing. Yeah, when I think of some of those early uh, Metal as Anything albums, uh, read some of your songs like Psychedelic Peace Lamp, uh, Drinking Off the Lips, um, Stones of the Heart, for instance. Uh, Pete, with your, with your uh, uh, Red to Green, um, Hold On, uh, earlier tracks like that, have they ever been performed live? Uh, a couple of them were, but very, at, very early yeah. on with the mentals. At, at the time, you know, we had those albums out, but um, some of those songs we won't be doing. Even the two of us, we're, we're, <laughs> we, we sort of, we're a bit choosy about what we do look at. But no, look, there are, there's lots of those songs that are, it's interesting to go back and just to relearn them and work out what the hell we were doing with the chords. We, we've just figured out close again, again. And psychedelic peace And man. psychedelic peace man. yeah, come to, come to speak of that. Wow, that'd be yeah. And, and that'd we, be all, and we, of, we often play Berserk Warriors, um, Pete's song. We we often actually play that in the set. The band know that one. So yeah, we do Egypt and, and, and that Egypt, one. Yeah. A couple of other ones more obscure, like Dorothy Parker's Hair and uh, I'm in Love with My Car. Yeah, the, when the, when the Cats and Dogs album uh, was out on radio, we were playing Got Hit a real lot. Does that get a run? Well, not, no, we haven't done that one actually. But we should not, not yet, but we will look at that one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a good sort of uh, slide ball terror. And I think uh, Reg, your uh, float away off uh, creatures was also a big radio hit. At least I know when I was at Eon FM in Melbourne. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Funny, I didn't even didn't I didn't know that. But he, we we haven't we haven't tried that one. He's completely forgotten that song. I think I have almost too. Yeah, no, I'd have I'd have to listen to the record <laughs> to be able to play that one. 
it's quite funny though when you do look back at the albums and then you look at the song titles it's it's kind of a bit of a mist you know, in the memory <laughs> i mean it's good sometimes i've heard a song, you know, in the background, I thought, oh, that, that sounds interesting and vaguely familiar. Then I've realised it's one of my songs yeah. and I haven't recognised it. Because I guess, I mean, between us, I think we've written and recorded approximately 80 songs each. Pretty wow. much. Wow. I mean, even, songs, songs even the songs we know well, we have played a lot. You know, I, I tend to forget them quite quickly, you know, <laughs> if I don't sort of play them enough, you know. So I've got to go over those lyrics and try and remember every time we play a gig. I'm, I usually flounder on something and, and you know, sort of fudge my way through. Well, there's there's a lot left in the set list to get to then. Let's uh, let's get to uh, the new album, uh, Great South Road, which uh, is a nod to your early days coming from New Zealand. Yeah, it's, it's the main road between um, Auckland and Wellington, <coughs> and, and we, we lived nearby or on that road and, and uh, when we were kids, so... Um, and, and it's, it's also vaguely, I suppose, a, a metaphor for, you know, heading south, like the human race, heading south, going downhill, having lots of problems at the moment. And who would have thought 2020 came along? <laughs> Good timing. Yes, I mean, the, the horrors of 2020 uh, sort of feed into your lyrics, though, don't they, Reg? Yeah, well, I mean, yes, yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't intending things, those things to happen, but yeah, sometimes people say, oh, you must be a, a, mind, a mind reader or a, a seer or a... Or a catastrophist. A, 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 well, yeah, my, my wife calls me a gloomy catastrophist, so it's not that surprising that I write these gloomy songs and then, then these things happen in the real world. I, I, I didn't cause it. I didn't create the problems. Let's, uh, let's get into a bit of gloomy, huh? I think we've got a track here from uh, Great South Road that you've got to play for us, and this is, uh, this is yeah. your one, Reg. Oh yeah, this one. This one is called um, "A Lonely Death Cleaning Company," uh, a true story. I read it in the paper. One, two, three, four. <laughs> death cleaning company came along to clean up the mess left them by a tiny flat after my lonely death brown steams on the couch and carpet from my undiscovered corpse hamburger bags and crumpled up cups Extra A's full of cigarette butts. I did slowly but surely slip into a state of self neglect. Nowhere to go and no one to see. No interest in hobbies, no close family. The lonely death cleaning company came along to clean up the mess. Lifting my tiny sweat up in my lonely bed. Ellen Rigby probably had a slightly better life than me. She owned a home and she went to church. That would provide some company. Contract systems engineer. I wore a grey shirt, had your grey hair. Ordinary spectacles and comfortable shoes. Had little to gain next to nothing to lose. The only dead cleaning company came along to clean up the mess. Left in my tiny flat up in my lonely bed. Hillary yeah, probably had a slightly better life than me. If she owned a home, then she went to church and would provide some company. The lonely dead cleaning company came along to clean up the mess. Left in 
Nobody noticed I was a man, a slowly the smallest audience you've had. Um, that song, Reg, Lonely Death Cleaning Company, now that's actually a real thing, isn't it? Yeah, I read an article in the paper. It's a, it, it, was a, it was a story about a, a, a Japanese guy. It was pretty, pretty closely, the lyrics in the song are pretty closely based on the story. And, you know, he, he was a contract systems engineer and he, he I think he'd been married earlier but he you know the, the the marriage had ended he lost contact with relatives and he and he was only i think in his 50s and he he died the lonely death and, and they have a special cleaning company that um, i think it might even be called the lonely death cleaning company which cleans up the mess after because you know obviously if you die and no one knows the body rots and sort of rots into the into the couch and the furniture and the stains what, everything stains the carpet and, and um so they have to get these kind of you know sort of fairly high-tech crews and to clean up the mess so it was it was based on that but you know it's kind of just about the you know the fact that some people do have a unfortunately have a lonely lives and it seems like a you know a very a particularly lonely thing to die alone and have no one aware of it you know we've all um felt uh you know the uh the dictionary meaning of longevity i mean when when uh, when greedy went uh recently that must have been a real blow yeah it was it was a big shock actually because we he was the one one member of the band we expected to live forever in, in a sense but um that didn't happen unfortunately yeah no no massive shock it was he was such a you know lively character and he was still out playing um you know as mental as anything the last last man standing really uh, with with you know new a new band playing with him but he was i mean i think he was on tour at the time and just about to play down in Melbourne, in fact, the, the following weekend. And so very big shock, you know, that it just happened like that all of a, all of a sudden. And yeah, I, he was the most um, cheerful, sort of positive person I've ever met, I think. Yeah. Maybe maybe too cheerful because maybe, maybe too cheerful, he yeah. should have been going off to the doctor, perhaps. We, we don't know, but, you know, definitely, you know, everyone was just... Um, you know, taken out of the blue with, it, with it, what happened. It, it, it seemed it seemed like a year that it came from nowhere, but 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 what I think uh, he did he had mentioned to someone two or three weeks before that his he, his leg was a bit sore and he was feeling a bit tired and and and, and the, the other person said oh, I should go to the doctor. He said oh no I've got a got a good physiotherapist. So he obviously did need to go to the doctor. Unfortunately, but he didn't. And he was an incredible sort of optimistic sort of fellow, you know. So he would have been on tour and thinking, well, no, the show must go on, which is what you know we always had had that attitude, you know. Mm. Sometimes when with the mentals, we'd be dragging around someone who was particularly ill and it took a lot for the band to actually stop and, you know, have a, let that person have a rest. I mean, I remember once, times when, you know. Once we're in Adelaide and it was me and I think yeah. Greedy, Greedy, was it? I mean, you had, had, new, one of you had pneumonia. You had something close to pneumonia. We were like lying in bed all day and we'd still go out at night and do the gig. And there was a time when I had pneumonia when I was playing in Melbourne. So yeah. I remember feeling, going to the doctor and thinking, oh, I don't feel really crook. And, Anyway, these things happen, you know, you do, you, 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 when you're younger, you tend to think of yourself as being a little bit more invincible. Um, but, um, you know, you, you get to an age like Greedy and it was yeah, definitely something that took everybody just um, by surprise. And it's a shame though, because, you know, if he had gone to a doctor, they probably could have fixed him up, but you know, it was, it wasn't, they weren't able to do that when he had a, had a massive heart attack. With uh, like mentals now, put into uh, hibernation, uh, Martin obviously not well enough to perform again. Uh, do you feel a responsibility now for continuing some of that legacy and maybe bringing back a lot more of those songs and putting them into a dog trumpet set? 
Well, I, I mean, I, you know, obviously metal is anything you're not going to play again. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, we don't, I don't know, don't know if we sort of think about not really a continuing the, the, the legacy or having a responsibility, but I mean, you know, we'll, we'll continue playing some of the songs as long as we can. And, um, and hopefully the fans will you know, keep listening to the, the old records if they, if they want to want to hear the songs as they were. And, and with sort of happenstance, the year being as it is, and we'd be, you know, like a lot of musicians like us are sort of reinventing the wheel a bit on how to keep going and what to do because you can't play live. So we're out there, we're, out, we're in here, you know, in our room playing live stream Facebook shows, the two of us. So we have been dipping back in, as we were saying before, dipping back into that all that mentals, um, catalogue, there's a lot of songs there, so it, and it's something we probably wouldn't have done had had we not been stuck at home with the, the with the COVID problem. Yeah. So you know, well, it's, it means, it, there's kind of a silver lining in it, in it in, in that way. If it means we get walking on rails and float away and um, hold on back in the set list, I'll be uh, <laughs> I'll be uh, walking on rails. That's, oh, that's, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Now we'll, we'll, we'll take your tips on all these songs. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I've made a list. <laughs> we, and, and we did, we did, well, I think I mentioned it before, we did Marianne too, which is a really pretty song. Uh, uh, one of the later Metals ones that Peter wrote. Uh, Stay For Too Long is uh, one of your songs, Pete. Uh, what's the backstory of this yep. one? Well, when we were, when we were growing up, our mother, uh, I think, was a very restless sort of spirit. And she, our father was a carpenter and she was always, moving us on dad would build a new house that the mum would sort of um you know sort of help design basically very you know just you know just draw it up on the on the on the kitchen table and dad would um draw up some plans and then build the house we and we moved a lot we moved yeah. in new zealand a we, lot we never lived longer than about three years or so in one yeah, place, not think. even that much i mean i was counting up the other day you know, and in the, the houses that we that he built that we lived in and, and in between with it be we'd be living in sort of rented houses while he built another one or, or living in the garage or the, the back of the house while he built the house or uh, i think i lived in about 15 different different places growing <laughs> up so this song really sort of just touches on on those memories of the restlessness and the moving, the constant moving, and, and you know, and just a, a bit of the philosophy of, you know, being alive, and you know, that sort of carries right through life, really. That um, impermanence, and you know, you feel like you're you're here, but you're not here. Mm. Let's have a listen to uh, "Stay for Two Long." Album. <laughs> Oh, 
holding back the tribes And somewhere several streets from here Or on the other side The tracks that tell the river to Be on the great divide Stay for too long Stay for too long it's just a thing that I sometimes hear. Stay for too long. Stay for too long. It's just a thing that I sometimes hear. It's just a thing that I sometimes hear. Excellent stuff. Stay for too long, Dog Trumpet. Coming soon to a venue, hopefully in 2021. Or two. Or two or three. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the story with the guitar, Reg? How far does that go back? Oh, good. Uh, quite a long time. I think I bought it in probably 1969. Oh, um, I'm trying to remember, 1979 maybe. I bought it, uh, bought it from a pawn shop in Newtown for three hundred and fifty dollars. And it was about eleven years old at the time, so yeah, it was a, it was a bit old at the time. It was a, it was a uh, sunburst. I had it um, resprayed blue, and, which is now pretty worn out. Yeah. So I mean, it's you know, I've always played this one and liked it, but I mean, I often think I should play other. I've, I've got a, a Les Paul, but I don't play it live that much because they're a bit heavy and they tend to go out of tune on the G string too swiftly and I've had a few Hoffners, I've played slide guitar on Hoffners and I've got a Dobra and acoustic guitar but I don't have a big collection like some some guitar players. Has that uh, particular one uh, done the rounds on a few albums over the years? Oh yeah, this is, I would have played this on pretty much uh, everything <laughs> we, we played and occasionally I'll play one of Peter's guitars and or um, and as I said, you know, the Hoffners for slide guitar and stuff like that but Generally, it's the, the old strap. Yeah. What's your pride and joy in the musical collection, Pete? Well, I, I love this little Martin cutaway, which is a, a beauty. Um, they've got a great sound with the mahogany top on it, and a little crisp, small, easy to play. And, um, they, you know, it's this is now getting a little bit of enough for years on it to start sounding pretty... Um, you know, it's got a nice vintage sound itself. So, yeah. and I've got uh, I've got a uh, Telecaster, and I've got a, a, a lovely Gretsch, um, Chet Atkins, you know, hollow hollow body. Yeah, so, that, that, that's a good one. I've actually played that on a couple of. That's tunes. pretty good. I've also got a, a, an Ibanez sort of you know copy of, of one of these things. or one of Regis did that with that uh, that one, and I've got I've got a cheap Commander, uh, a blues guitar, Commander guitar, which is also a good guitar, but you know, I, I tend to get lazy and well, not lazy, but you just tend to, you know, feel comfortable with one or two guitars. So I feel a bit, a bit sort of, um, a bit sorry that I don't play some of the other guitars. It's really a bit guilty. But I've also got my, I got my, my, my bass, a couple of basses too, which I love. So my Fender, you know, my Fender Precision is 
it's a beauty too. That's another late sixties one, which is great to play. The old yeah. guitars are just you know they're hard to hard to beat. Well, at least in the meantime, we've got uh, you know the the regular shows. People get to see you on you know online this way, yeah, and uh, yeah. and hear you yeah. and hear the songs uh, a bit different. So thanks for joining us today at Noise Eleven. Oh, oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us on.